Hello. Earlier today, I went to have coffee with a new friend, and um, she also does face painting. Um, and she's going to be doing more face painting independently by herself. And she asked me, "How do I um, do this by myself? How do I do face painting by myself?" And I got really tongue-tied because there's a lot of stuff, you know. So um, I. I want to answer that question though, so um, I'm still all jacked up on coffee, so <laughs> when I got home, um, I started writing down um, how I do face painting by myself, and I have 10 things. So I have a few pages here, <laughs> um, and I printed it all out so I, I hopefully don't ramble as much. Um, I also typed it all up and put it in the description so um, y'all can copy and paste it into Google Translate. Um, so here are all the steps for booking, setting up, painting, boundaries, and uh, more important information. Number one, be seen, be found. Um, have a Facebook page. Show your service area email and phone number. Car vinyl. I wish I had painted my car years ago. I've gotten so much attention, so many comments. Um, people love it. Even if you just put it on the back back windshield of your, um, the back window of your car, face painting by um, whoever, whatever your business name is, um, that's all you need. That way they can just look your business name up, hopefully find your Facebook page, and contact you. Send introduction emails um, to local businesses. All you really need are some photos in the text area, not as attachments. You want it in the email when they open it. Um, and then your service area and your contact information. Number two, Pick your preferred communication preference. Um, how do you like to communicate with potential events? All of my um, communications go through email. I um, turned off Messenger because there was, um, people would text my phone number, email me, call me, Facebook message me, and it was too much to um, keep track of. So now everything goes through email. If they go to my website um, and go to the booking requests or contact page, it all goes through my email. So it's all kept track of and I organize it in um, folders in my email. Um, and get all of the needed event information at once. That saves you time and energy and it saves them time and energy. They're more likely to book you if there's less stuff back and forth needed when you're um, communicating. It's just bing bang boom, you got the event. So I um, typed up different email responses and I have them all saved as drafts. So those are, are very helpful, that way you don't have to keep typing out. It saves an insane amount of time, especially once you start going um, and getting a lot more events. If I'm not available for an event request, I say thank you. I'm not available and I also provide a list of other people in the area, balloon twisters and face painters, anyone that um, folks might be interested in hiring for an event. Once it is confirmed that they want to move forward with the events, I send them the contract. They send me the signed contract and I put it in my calendar and that's it. I agree with needing um, a contract. I do pay for liability insurance, good liability insurance. Um, I think that's important too if you have a if you have a face painting business. I text all of my events about one week prior to the date. That's why I ask for their phone number. Um, I text them and say, hey, um, this is Brittany, the face painter. I will see y'all on this date at um, this time and then they always say yay looking forward to it and that way I have their phone number on hand 
I keep the conversation until the event is over so that if I have trouble with the address or parking, um, if anything's blocked off, I can call them and say I need help. <laughs> um, and I add their information to Google Maps. Just the name, date, times, cost, parking info, and the notes of the saved address. Number three, arrive early, 15 to 20 minutes before an event. That's time to park, unload, set up, and if you need to, run to the bathroom real quick. Um, if children or the event coordinator wants to talk to you when you get there, keep working and doing what you need to do to set up so that you don't fall behind and you remain on time. You remain on time and early. Early is good. Early is less stress. <laughs> Number four, set up. Um, when I arrive to an event, sometimes the coordinators or the parents have a space picked out for me. Um, most of the time it's a good spot. Sometimes it's um, not a good spot. I always ask to be away from music and food. Um, music, I can't hear people talking, and food. I don't like being set up by the food where people are walking around and trying to get food, so. I'm not worried about being seen because I know that people will find me. I also have uh, two umbrellas. One, my big one, and the other one is the small one that I use at all of my indoor events. It sets up my face painting station. It's very cute. I prefer being tucked out of the way because I know that everyone's gonna say, hey, face painting's over there, so I'm not worried about um, being front and center. I carry my supplies in for small events or birthday parties. That's why I usually need less time for birthday parties, um, less less time getting there early. I'm. I always try to arrive at a birthday party 15 minutes early. That's plenty of time for me to park and carry my things inside and still be there and start start painting early. Um, for large events though, I do use my wagon so that um, I can get through doorways and, and large events are usually larger areas for um, walking around and stuff. So um, a wagon is very useful. with. As long as it has um, wide tires, all-terrain tires, that's, that's very important. Also for setup, I position my sign, my menu, to be clearly visible and not blocked by the line. Um, and my sign has face painting at the top, the cost, the times of the event, so I'm open and closed from this time to this time and my designs and that's it. I use tape and chalk and or chalk, painter's tape, um, on the ground so if I'm on concrete I've got a bag of chalk in my bag and if I'm on grass or carpet I use painter's tape. Painter's tape does stick to grass. <laughs> and the last thing is I always bring my own drinking water, face painting water, um, tip jar, sign, sanitizer, tissues, and towels um, because that's how I like to operate and I also want to be the easiest part of an event. Um, usually an event has lots of different activities or other entertainers planned. I just want to be the easy part, you know? I want the booking process to be easy um, and quick. I want my setup to be, y'all know, as simple as possible, um, and, and I just want to be the nice part of, of that event coordinator's event. You know, easy peasy, they don't have to worry about anything, as long as they give me a good spot. <laughs> um, no, I'm just kidding. Number five, painting. Um, paint, paint, paint and take care of yourself throughout the event. Um, drink water, clean your hands, change your paint water, stand up and stretch, and blow your nose. I know it stinks blowing your nose in front of people. 
an accident could happen. Um, same thing with drinking water. I have gone to drink some water and just, it's just, you know how it jumps out of your water container sometimes. That's always fun. <laughs> but it's important. It's very important. Um, it's very important to take care of yourself while you're painting. Um, I have a little note here. It says, a happy painter equals happy people. And that equals a great day. And it's very true. Um, take care of yourself before the event too. Wear clothes that you like. Wear clothes that um, you're comfortable in and that make you feel good. Stay up an extra 10 or 20 minutes before you go to bed to make sure that you are good to go for the event on the following day. Um, pack your car the night before, make a list, check the weather forecast, all of the things. Um, all of those things are taking care of yourself. Number six, closing and leaving on time. On time for me, leaving on time for me, is um, 10 to 20 minutes after my designated close time. So if I'm scheduled to be done painting at 4, um, I need to be leaving by 4.10 or 4.15 or 4.20 at the latest, um, the very latest. Um, that includes the time for packing up. And how I do that, which is the most important thing here, um, is three different things. Number one, I have a clear, visible sign with my painting times. Number two, I make an announcement. I make an announcement um, as many as 30 minutes before I close or um, 10 minutes before I close. It depends on how long the line is. Um, I stop painting. I get up. I gesture to my sign and say um, I'm closing at 4 and anybody um, after 4, everyone after 4 can get a rainbow and I use my 1 inch flat brush and they come up to me in groups and I give them all rainbows and it doesn't have to be a basic you know basic rainbow I, I can with that 1 inch brush you can go across the eye I like to do lightning across the eye and a swoop on the other side. I just mark them all up with rainbows. And I have two one inch brushes with two different rainbows going at a time. The classic um, true rainbow in the sky and then usually a more like pink, purple, teal, you know, rainbow on the other one. And I glitter them. And um, that way uh, they're all leaving with something. And if they don't want a rainbow, they will leave the line. <laughs> um, this, giving everyone a rainbow after you close it isn't necessary. I do believe that it is um, a gift. Um, it's a kindness from you to them. Um, you know, people don't um, always notice or pay attention to how many people you're able to paint in an hour or they think that because they're in line, before your close time they will get something instead of knowing that your close time is when you stop painting. Um, I oftentimes need to be at an event after an event so I have to be done <laughs> painting. I have to be done painting. Um, so the rainbow strategy works really well for me and I'm happy and they're happy. The last thing is these birds are <laughs> talking as much as I am right now, jeez. <laughs> Anyways, stay true to your word and your boundaries. If you make an announcement, when I make an announcement that I'm closed, I'm done painting at four o'clock and everyone will get a rainbow if they want one, a rainbow and sparkles. I mean that and I stick to that so um, it can't always be precise because sometimes the last person has a brother or sister or a brother and a sister so it's a you know um, 
a few minutes after four o'clock, but basically four. Um, but I stay true to my word and I close when I say I'm going to close um, and only give rainbows after you close and only for a certain amount of time. Um, it, people will keep joining your line as so long as you keep painting. If you keep painting, people will keep joining the line. So um, I do, even though I'm closed, I'm giving everyone rainbows. People are, little children are running out of, you know, the woods or whatever, just appearing out of nowhere saying, oh, I want to, I want to, you know, they all want something. Um, I do cut it off and I say, I, I'm, I'm closed now and um, you just, you just got to do it. It's, it's not, um, it's not a big deal. And that's actually what I wrote next. Um, be matter of fact, not a jerk. This is not a big deal. And I show that it's not a big deal by being um, calm and um, clear. Calm and clear about everything it, it's, and not making a big deal. I don't go, oh, I'm so sorry. I, I can't, or I don't go, I'm done painting. <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not angry. I'm, I'm happy. I'm always happy when I'm painting. So, um, yeah, I, I just let them know calmly and clearly and follow through with that. Follow through with being closed. Number seven, packing up. The parent or the event coordinators will talk to me and they'll pay me. Um, I let them know that I had a great time and thank you for having me. Um, I don't need any help. Don't worry about me. I'm just going to um, pack up and head out. And um, that way they can continue enjoying their events. Oftentimes everyone is asking me, do you need help carrying your stuff? And I just like to let them know ahead of time. Um, and that way I can, I can be left on my own for that little bit to make sure that my stuff's all good to go. Um, I have everything and um, I just walk over to my car and head over to another event. Number eight, pay per face events. So for pay per face events, you want to bring change um, and you want to bring change based on what you charge for face paintings. So um, you may need more ones, fives, or ten dollar bills depending on what you charge. Make sure that your phone and your card reader are charged. You don't want to miss um, a sale if someone asks you, do you take card? Um, nowadays though, you can also take PayPal and Venmo. So if you do take one of those, print out, um, print out the their logo and attach it to some part of your um, kit or something, some kind of sign. Use a fanny pack or purse with easy access to accept payments. Y'all have seen my setup videos so you know that I'm using a purse now and I use the front pocket and I attach it to my um, face painting case so I just turn, unzip the front pocket, take the money or give them change. It's right there, super fast. Always keep your money on you. Always keep your money on you. Um, that's why fanny pack or purse is best. Um, you can, if you have to run to the bathroom or anything, just always keep it on you. Um, and your tip jar, always keep that on you too. You can have an extra bag or um, a backpack in my case, and I put my tip jar in my backpack if ever I have to head out somewhere. Um, at the, when I go to the farmer's market um, or other events, sometimes you have to drive in and drop your things off, go park your car, and then walk back to your space. I never leave my face painting case or my money anywhere. Um, I'll drop off my setup equipment and then park and then carry my case and, and other more valuable things, more things that are harder to replace with me. One last thing for paper face events. Um, this is just just in case I still do this. Um, I keep my kit, my whole case open if I have to run to the bathroom. Uh, I keep it open um, with the water jars open and everything out because if someone 
sees my stuff and says, oh, I, I want that, it's harder for them to um, steal if they were to be so bold and terrible. <laughs> it's harder for them to steal, um, someone to steal it if they have to mess with it a whole bunch to be able to carry it out. Um, yeah, just lots of little things. Hmm. Number nine and ten are all about people. Number nine um, is upset, mean, or rude people. You should rarely have to deal with these kind of people. You should rarely have to deal with jerks if you um, do these three things. Have clearly visible painting times. I've said this a lot, but um, it's very important to have clearly visible painting times. Number two, use your voice kindly and firmly for everyone to hear, everyone in your line, 10 to 30 minutes before closing to let them know when you're closing, that you're closing in half an hour, I'm closing at four o'clock. Um, do it a couple of times if you need to. Do it half an hour beforehand um, or more if your line is super long and, and let them know everyone after this time can have a, a, a rainbow and some glitter. Um, but use your voice for everyone to hear. Very important. Number three, set boundaries and stick to them. Set boundaries and stick to them. Use painter's tape to establish your line. I put a strip and everyone knows that that strip is do not cross because I put the strip and then I put an X um, on the other side of it and kids know that X marks the spot that's where you stand don't cross the line like I mark it all with tape and arrows but not everyone is looking down <laughs> they want to take the most the quickest most direct route to me um, so I do stop the painting I do stand up I always stand up to be seen and heard it's very important. You don't want to just sit down and be like, hey guys, you know, do this half-heartedly. You just want to stand up and kindly and firmly and calmly ask them to move this way and physically direct the traffic. I have to control all of the things and set boundaries and let people know what's going on and what they need to do so that I can do what I need to do, which is what they want me to do. <laughs> oh man. I'm, I'm gonna have to watch that again and write that down. That was good. <laughs> so those three things all lead up to um, they them the people seeing that you are a professional person and you mean business um, uh, by making an announcement for everyone in line to hear by making that announcement that you're closing at this time, yada yada. Um, Nobody can say that they didn't hear you because the whole line heard you. Um, they can't get upset when you close. And if they do get upset, um, they will look foolish, you know? So people don't, people don't like looking foolish. Um, so that's why it's very good to be seen and heard. It's very good to stay calm and happy and collected and matter of fact because none of this is a big deal it's just face painting nobody has to get their face painted you know um, it's really okay um, and the last part of number nine is um, move unruly people along quickly so people who are drunk or they're just loud or they're very talkative throughout the painting or beforehand or they're um, asking questions that should really be asked through email or not at all, you know, just talking, um, which is all of these things are usually adults. Paint them fast and say, uh, for example, thanks for visiting me. It's time for me to paint the next person now. Um, have an awesome day. You know, thanks for letting me paint you. I will see you later. <laughs> but you gotta um, move them along. Anyways, number 10, the final, the final thing, number 10 is crying children and pushy parents. I never, never paint 
any crying kids. I never paint anyone who doesn't want a painting. Um, and I don't allow parents to restrain their kids. Um, and by that I mean holding, if the parent is trying to hold the kid's head at a certain position or hold them still, I won't paint them until the parent lets go. So how I handle that is, um, how I handle it if the kid isn't, isn't crying. Um, and, but they do sit on my chair willingly, but then they just drop, drop their head. Um, because I'm, I'm a stranger and it's scary. Some kids have never been painted um, for whatever reason. And the parent like yanks the kid's head up and, and holds it in place. I don't paint them, period. I don't start painting. Um, I will give that child more time and I will talk to them, but I do let the parent know that she is okay. If it's a little girl, I'll say she or he is okay. Um, you don't have to hold them. Uh, and I still don't paint. If they continue to hold them, I don't paint. They, they get the picture. Um, because again, if you stick to your boundaries, do not give in to things that aren't okay with you and your business and your heart and what's important to you, um, then, then people will get the picture, you know, and they will most likely listen or leave. Um, so anyways, the parents usually say, oh, okay, you know, and, and the child will drop their head and I just have to give that person more time and say, can you lift your face so I can paint you? I show on my hand, I put paint on my hand, um, I show them, I put the paint on their arm with the sponge or brush, depending on the design, and say, you know, um, this is what it's going to feel like on your face. Um, are you ready to be a cat or are you ready for your unicorn or um, do you want it on your arm or your face? And if they want it on their face, I say, okay, lift your chin up so that I can paint you. I also do not physically force um, a face to move in any direction. Um, I very gently tap or gesture. I went a little over time, but I hope you caught that. Anyways, let's go back to crying children and pushy parents. So yes, I never paint anyone who doesn't want to be painted. I never paint crying kids, and I don't allow parents to restrain their child. Um, I only paint people who want to be painted and freely let me paint them. And I make no exceptions to that whatsoever, no matter what period. That's it. <laughs> and when I tell people that, they, they know that. They can see it in my face. They know that, that I'm not moving. <laughs> um, so here's a real scenario that I'm going to give you. Oh, bunnies! Coffee. So here's a scenario that has happened um, throughout my face painting career. This isn't this doesn't happen once or twice or three times. It's happened quite a few times. Um, okay, here it is. Uh, parents and child have been waiting in line for an hour. It's now their turn, and the child is crying and doesn't want to be painted. They don't want anything. They're just crying. They don't want to be touched. Nothing. Um, the parent sits down with the child in her lap, holds the child's crying head against her chest, and says, it's fine, it's fine, go ahead and paint, you can, you can paint her, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> um, I always say no, I, I, and calmly, you know, I, I'm calm, I'm fine, I know the kid's okay, <laughs> it's, it's, just, it's just sad, um, but I always say no, I don't paint crying children, and I don't paint anyone who doesn't want to be painted. Um, if they continue, I continue. If they continue to say, no, it's, you know, she's okay. I say, no, I don't paint crying kids. I don't paint anyone who doesn't want to be painted. Um, people who have been through this situation will totally understand it. And people who are hearing about this for the first time will be like, what? Especially parents. Parents, if you're a parent and, and, um, you're watching this video, um, it may surprise you to hear that this happens often. 
people in line can see and hear me tell this parent this. The parents um, may be upset, but my hope is that they will learn from the experience. I am happy and very confident about my boundaries. This is my business and I do what's best for myself and my business. And what is most important to me in my business is to give everyone who visits me a wonderful experience with face painting. That is what's most important. That was a pretty, pretty long one, but most of my videos are a little bit long. But anyways, I, I hope that y'all like it. I'm getting eaten up by mosquitoes now and it's getting darker, so um, yeah. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.